Hey everybody, this is Philip Dockery, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the complications that can arise with manual intax implantation. But first, let's review the steps of the operation. We start by measuring the corneal thickness with a handheld picometer in the operating room just prior to the start of surgery, approximately one millimeter from the limbus, where we anticipate we'll make the incision. Then we mark the cornea with gentian violet, and then we'll make our radial incision using a guarded diamond blade where we mark the cornea at approximately 80% depth of what we measured. Next, we'll apply suction and then open up a small stromal pocket at the base of the incision that we made. And then we'll insert the corkscrew blade and bluntly dissect the semicircular channels. After that, we'll gently insert the intact segment and close the wound at the end of the operation if needed. Manual intact implantation is a beautiful and elegant surgery when done well. However, one of the major pushbacks of the operation is the fear of intraoperative complications. One of those complications is corneal perforation. While it is possible to perforate the cornea anteriorly while you're dissecting the semicircular channel, we have a case of where we've perforated the cornea posteriorly while we're opening up the small stromal pocket. And I'd like to walk you through that. As you can see, we've already marked the cornea made the radial incision, and applied suction. So our next step is we're going to open up a small stromal pocket using what we call the long Sinsky hook. During this process, we see an outpouring of aqueous onto the corneal surface, indicating a perforation. So the first thing we need to do is stop and decide what should we do? Should we abort the case or continue going? But to answer that question, we must determine if it's safe to proceed. So we reinsert the Sinsky hook back into the incision and dissect a little bit of the stroma. We notice that the globe remains intact and no aqueous continues to leak from the wound. We therefore continue the operation and make the stromal pouch slightly more anterior, meaning not quite at the base. We're able to successfully do this and not interfere with the perforation, so we can then continue to dissect the semicircular channel using the corkscrew blade. However, the semicircular channel is supposed to follow along the marked lines with gentian violet. But as you notice, it drifts a little bit towards the visual axis here, which could be in part because the dissection was slightly more interior than what we're used to. Also, we used a suture in this case because we wanted to make sure that the wound was indeed closed. After burying the knot, we used a whack to ensure that the wound was not leaking. Once successful, we then concluded the operation and the patient followed up again the next day. At that point, the patient was thrilled with the outcome and had an uncorrected visual acuity of 2025. So far in this video, we've described one way of responding appropriately after a perforation occurs in manual intax implantation. However, you may be wondering, what could we have done differently to prevent the perforation in the first place? We asked ourselves the same question, and after much scrutiny of the surgical videos and our routine in the operating room prior to the surgery, we discovered that we were making the incision at a marginally different location than where we were measuring the thickness of the cornea just before the start of the operation. Let me elaborate. So bear with me in my drawings, but let this blue circle represent the cornea and the pupil. And preoperatively, we were taking a measurement with a handheld picometer of the corneal thickness approximately here. And let the smaller blue ring represent where you mark the cornea intraoperatively. Take note that in eyes with larger corneas, the area that's marked is farther from the limbus than you would expect in a normal eye. Therefore, when you go to make the incision and line it up with where the markings are on the cornea, these two are not in the same location. And an 80% depth measurement here may indeed be a 90 to 95% depth incision at this point, making posterior perforation much more common. So to conclude, the premise of preventing corneal perforation in manual intax implantation is making the incision at the same point where you measure the corneal thickness so that you can get an accurate assessment of how deep you need to go. So the steps to do this is mark the cornea, measure where you mark, and then cut where you measure. After adopting this change in steps, we've seen no episodes of posterior corneal perforation. I hope this video offered some insight on how to successfully navigate through corneal perforation in the setting of manual intax implantation. Thanks for watching.